Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jibril Jackson, this is Why Earth is a Prison and How to Escape It by the channel Kuz Kuzad in a Nutshell. We are trapped on Earth, controlled by an ancient debt to the universe. Where is he going with this? Is this some kind of a, one of the philosophical videos he does or is this scientific? I don't know. It's still going to be fun since it's Kuz Kuzad video and all the Kuz Kuzad videos are awesome. I love how his uh, genre is really vast, right? He talks about every single topic, even the philosophical one. So yeah. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the cast of plays like Cuz Gazan reacts. I've broke quite a few Cuz Gazan videos already. So if you haven't seen them, check out that playlist. Uh, check out the playlist too, like Old East Sarcastic Prox, Sun Over Simplified, History, CCB Grey. You know, let's watch it. And remember, people, this is Cuz Gazan video, right? This is from 2017. So I don't know. Some of, some of his videos gets blocked for some reason. So I have to put checker box there. So yeah, maybe it might get blocked. Maybe it not. Who knows? We'll see. So let's watch it. We are prisoners on Earth. The universe taunts us by showing us all the places we can't ever visit. However, if our species wants to have a long-term future, we have to escape our prison. But what's keeping us here in the first place? Turns out we owe the universe a debt that is 4.5 billion years old. So you have your student debt, you have your mortgage. There are so many debts. Apparently we owe a debt to Universe 2, huh? Get in line, I guess. Everything with mass in the universe attracts every other thing with mass. We call this phenomenon gravity. The closer you are to a big chunk of mass, the stronger the attraction or the more you're pulled in. This effect traps us on Earth. All right. <clears throat> okay, this might not be the point of this video, but this still I just thought I just re remember this, so I have to talk about it. Otherwise, I'll forget it. Basically, I saw that you know uh, Joe Rogan clip from his podcast with, with Neil deGrasse Tyson. This is that podcast where basically I don't know Neil deGrasse Tyson was more tired or something. He was interrupting Joe a lot, and it became a thing. We could see how annoyed he was. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson was annoyed because I don't know he was tired that day or something. He didn't want to do the podcast, but he had to because he booked it or something. I don't know what that was, but you know Joe basically asked him what is gravity, and he just got annoyed there. And Joe's like talking in a way that, you know, it's still, you know, the jury's still out there. Like, we don't know what gravity is. I know what that means. Of course, we know what gravity is. Ob obviously, we might find more property of gravity. We might understand gravity in more broader spectrum. Uh, but as at, at the fundamental levels, we know what gravity is. It's not going to change, right? I mean, Newton uh, laid the foundation for it. He was kind of wrong. Okay, I don't want to say wrong. Not wrong, but you know, he laid the foundation for it, and then Einstein basically perfected it. Spa uh, you know, gravity is the the curvature of space-time continuum. It's simple, fabric of space and time. Basically, it's you know, bends, it curves, and that's what the gravity is. Now, people have a hard time understanding this. Basically, imagine uh, you know, a fish in the sea, right? Fish doesn't know anything outside of the sea, so they don't see the water inside the sea as something. They just think it's empty. But it's not. It's water. We know it. That's the same thing with the space-time continuum, you know, fabric of space and time. It's a thing. It's not really empty, right? So with the heavy mass objects, it curves, it bends. And that curvature of space and time is what gravity is. That's it. There's nothing more complicated than that. You could easily demonstrate that on your bed, on your bed sheet. If you put two heavy things together, heavy balls, basically the cur curve on your bed will attract them together. That's how gravity works. I know that has nothing to, nothing to do with the video, but I just remember that. We can imagine this as being prisoners in a gravity prison or a gravity well. It's not a literal well, but a handy concept to understand how this works. Be yeah, I mean, understand this from all directions, well, right? But a handy concept. Don't just see it from this side. Imagine the same type of cone is, for, you know, in every direction, 360 degree. And you understand that how gravity is from all directions. It just, you know, uh, curves inside in three dimensional space, I guess. To understand how this works. Being in a gravity prison means that you owe gravity energy. But how can you owe energy? Because in our universe, things don't want to change their speed or direction. Yeah. To convince them to move, you have to expend energy. Billions of years ago, the gravitational attraction of trillions of trillions of dust particles orbiting our sun pulled them together until they formed a planet. 
This process used energy and created the gravity well we're now a part of. The deeper you are inside a gravity well, the more energy you owe gravity. If you don't find a way to get enough energy, you're not able to leave, no matter what you do. Because Damn. your atoms were once part of the dust that the universe expended energy on to get to this place. Okay, hmm, let's summarize all of that again. Objects in the universe don't like to move. You have to convince them to do so with energy. Gravity used energy to convince the parts that make up our planet to move together. This created a gravity prison in the process, trapping us. To escape it... Yeah, gravity is one of the most fundamental things of the universe. Basically, without it, the things that we know won't exist, right? So gravity is pretty important, but that also traps us. I mean, obviously... Uh, but it's a really weird thing to see it like, you know, you, we are basically trapped on Earth and we owe the universe energy. Basically, energy means like, you know, how fuel in the rocket that comes out as the energy we get propelled in the space. That's a weird way of saying, but yeah, it's kind of true. It's really, I guess, poetic way of seeing things. Yeah. We need to repair it with energy. Okay. How do we do that? To get into space, we need to go through a complicated process of exchanging energy. For this purpose, we build a negative potential energy repaying machines, known by their more boring name, rockets. Rockets work by using some of the most energetic chemical reactions humans know about to basically explode fuel in a controlled way. This converts chemical energy into kinetic energy. The exhaust of the reaction is... This just reminded me that all the people, you know, who denies global warming also said, oh, what about those uh, NASA people who say, send a rocket? Do you see the smoke there? How much, you know, basically pollution they send? It's water, man. <laughs> it's water. It's not carbon dioxide. It's directed outwards and pushes the rocket away from Earth. By expending a lot of energy, we are increasing our gravitational potential energy which is a complicated way to say that we're paying back our energy debt to gravity. But it's actually a lot trickier than that. When you burn fuel to get into orbit, you lose lots of energy to heat, the exhaust and atmospheric drag, so you actually need much more. And you can't just pile a huge amount of really explosive, dangerous fuel close to your payload and detonate it. You need a controlled burn, which is complicated and makes your rocket very heavy, which means it has more mass. The more mass something has, the more energy you need to convince it to move. So you need more fuel to lift up your rocket. But if you need more fuel, that means you need more rocket to carry that fuel. But this makes your rocket heavier, thus requiring more fuel, which requires more rocket to carry that new fuel. And This is awesome. This is why Saturn V rocket was so big, right? Because, uh, you know, if you if you want to uh, you know, put certain payload in space, you need certain amount of fuel. But now that fuel has the weight. So that fuel requires more fuel to put it up. And it just goes on and on, something like a chain reaction, until you put uh, you know come to a certain point where rocket is big enough to carry that payload and the rocket's fuel as well. Right? That's why Saturn V rocket. So if you want to increase that payload somehow, you know, for something... Then chain reaction starts again. Now you have to put more fuel in, but that fuel requires more fuel and that fuel requires more fuel until you reach a point again where you can send a rocket in space. But now rocket has gone way bigger just because of a small you know, payload increase. This is why during the Apollo program, miniaturization of the computer was really essential. That's why you know, all the you know, small chips, small computers were invented during the Apollo program because they can't send big ass computers there because Saturn V rockets would be, would be still smaller. You would need even bigger rocket. And you can't just increase the rocket big and big. It becomes impractical. That's why every every genius uh, they, they could find basically worked on that, like how to make small chip computers rather than big as computers. That basically spearheaded our IT technology that I guess 30, 35% of the GDP of the world is based on that. Just because of that Apollo program, just because all the scientists thought we have to make computers small, so we can't send big as computers on those rocket. So on. At the end of this madness, you need closer to a hundred times the weight of your there payload you. to launch. Ariana 6, for example, the European rocket, will weigh 800 tons and should be able to transport 10 tons into geostationary transfer orbit or 20 tons into medium Earth orbit. 
But a rocket can only produce so much thrust, so there's a maximum weight after which it just won't take off. If you add too much weight, it won't lift off, so you can't just build bigger and bigger fuel tanks. This is the tyranny of the rocket equation, and it means spaceflight will never become easy. But wait, it gets worse. Getting to space is still not good enough. You're still inside the gravity prison at the edge of space and will crash back to Earth. Staying in space is much harder than getting there. To get to a stable position where it can stay for a while, a rocket has to reach low Earth orbit. To do this, you need a lot of kinetic energy, which means going extremely fast. At an altitude of about 100 kilometers, this is 8 kilometers per second, 28,000 kilometers per hour. Fast enough to travel around Earth in 90 minutes. Yeah. Here, we can use a trick. Instead of flying straight up, we can go... There's the sweet spot, you know, 90 minutes of orbit. So, say if we, you know, uh, sped up our Earth's rotation for, to 90 minutes per rotation rather than 24 hours, all the people at the equator basically float because, you know, they would be like the low Earth orbit. So, they, they, they would feel no gravity. Go sideways. Earth is a sphere. So, if you're going sideways fast enough, even though you're falling towards Earth, the ground will curve away beneath you. So as long as you're above the atmosphere, about 100 kilometers up, you'll be able to stay up there in orbit. This is what the ISS does, falling around Earth, expending energy from time to time to stay fast enough. If we look at orbits in scale, we see that near-Earth orbit is laughably close to Earth. Yeah. To deploy, for example, satellites or leave for other planets requires another round of energy debt repayment. Getting to orbit is the most difficult part of spaceflight for us right now. For example, if we want to send a rocket to Mars, half the energy is necessary just to get into orbit, yeah. and the other half for the 55 million kilometers to Mars. Therefore, to be as effective as possible, rockets aren't built in one giant piece. Instead, we use multi-stage rockets. You don't need to carry an empty fuel tank, so rockets drop it. Rockets today shed their boosters and main stage as they ascend, with each successive stage being its own fully contained rocket, complete with its own engine and fuel. Okay, so this is why getting to space is hard. If you feel all of this seems really complicated, don't worry. It's literally rocket science. Yeah. This video was made possible yeah, Newton basically came up with... Newton was damn genius, right? So, you know, I said it that Newton is one of the most smartest guy ever lived and people just start to debate it on comments. Man, chill out. All the accomplishment he did, that is no case you can make, right? Uh, some of the research, he, he, he just stopped doing it midway because he's like, okay, my attention is needed somewhere else. And people, you know, 100 years later, you know, came up with the, some invention that won them Nobel Prize the same thing that Newton was doing, but he just left it out. So, from the crumbs of his plate, people are, you know, gaining Nobel awards. That That's how great the guy was. Yeah. So, that's what this is one poetic way of saying. Basically, yeah, if you want to escape Earth, you need to give, uh, you know, something back to the universe. So, basically, energy in the form of fuel. Yeah, it makes sense. But yeah, gravity is pretty fundamental when it comes to the universe, otherwise none, nothing would exist, right? And obviously that would mean it would also trap you, but it's kind of important. That's how you live here. If there was no gravity, I don't know, living would be really weird. But yeah, you need to shed a lot of energy just to get out of it. All right, people, that was why Earth is a prison and how to escape it by the channel because in a nutshell. If you like more reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction I did. There's a link in the description. Check out the castle, basically, the cards, and yeah, I'll see you next time.